that's fine. On your table is some stuff that you're going to work with. So that's the materials for the workshop. Okay. So I'm going to start with some questions. Who here is doing TDD in your teams? Okay. If you're not coding yourself, if you're a scrum master, if your teams are. What is the point of defining a test before you start? Sorry? Fail early. Fail early? Say that again? Do just what is required. You do what is required. Just what is required. Anything else? You will know when you are done. You'll know when you're done? Yes. And you know where you're going to, right? You've defined up front where you're going. So, what is continuous improvement? Inspect and adapt. Yes. We don't often think about these two things together. So, in this workshop, oh wait, before I go there, how do we do our inspect and adapt? What is the process we use? Or you guys? You use retrospectives. Anybody doing anything else? Okay, yeah? Problem solving. Problem solving. So typically in Agile, we use retrospectives. From Lean, there's A3 Thinking and Kaizen, which is where the title of this workshop comes from. And they all come from something called the scientific method. And what is that? There are many explanations, and I'm going to do it as visually as I can. We start off by looking clearly at what our environment is. And then we question and analyze. We, we look deeply into it. First we look at and then we look in. From that, we formulate an idea about how the system can be changed, what would be valuable. And then we implement our experiment. And that would be in the course of our sprint or however we determine our, uh, the plan. Then we stop and we check our results. That's typically where our um, retrospectives come in, right? And then we assess the implications of the change in the system. Or do we? So the point of this talk is uh, that uh, I'm not getting the thing. This area over here. From month to um, month, or sprint to sprint, however long your sprints are, week to week, we make a change and we see at the end of the sprint whether we have succeeded and what, and we measure our success and then we move on to the next one. But to me, there's a lot missing in understanding the bigger context of are we going in a good direction? Is this change that we've made valuable? Is it going to help us in the long run? So that's what we're going to be looking at. The ideas from A3, anything here in Kaizen. Has anybody seen one of these before? Okay. I heartily recommend Claudia Perron's presentation. This is a Kaizen memo. It's quite simple. It says, before we, this happened, we had this problem. We did this thing, and the effect was that. It's nice, it's simple, but it's kind of small, and it's aimed at individuals of very small teams, and it, it, it's... Um, it, it doesn't contain enough for the Agile team. On the other hand, you've got the A3 report. Has anybody ever used one of these? You have? Okay. I haven't. It's very detailed. It's plan, 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 do, check, act. It works very well at an organizational level, and particularly in a complicated environment where you can try to predict uh, in a manufacturing environment what you can change and where, where that's going to flow down. So that's for organizations and for individuals. We don't really have a mechanism for this for teams. So what I'm introducing is an idea for developing that for teams. So how would we look at it for teams? We want to stop and ask first, where are we now? And at any given time, your team, your product team, is in a current state. It's current, right? It's right now. 
It's influenced by a variety of factors. Team factors are things like um, who's in your team, do you have the skills you need, how long you've been together, do you have a stable velocity, uh, how, how mature is the team. Product factors are things like uh, how well you know your backlog, are you working directly with the customer, do you things, do things like prototyping, um, though that's sort of in, information about your product, how mature is that. Organizational factors, how agile is your organization? How well do you respond to change? What's your decision-making process? Are you hierarchical or decentralized? And technical factors, what your platform is. Is it the right platform? Is this a legacy, are you working with legacy co code? How comfortable are you to change your code? Um, along with skills to fit that. So these are all interdependent. And they also exist within something called the, the bigger environment over which we have much less control, your markets, uh, your competitors, the environment that you're in. Where should we be? So there isn't an answer, but we can decide on where we want to go by setting a target condition. An idea that we are over here and these factors Maybe our product maturity can improve. Maybe our technical factors are dragging us down a bit. We don't know. So we've defined a target way and then defined a way to measure our progress because wanting to go somewhere is awesome. But knowing if you've got there is much harder. Okay, so the simulation we're going to do, it's a before and after retrospective. So we're going to do two, the end of one retrospective and the start of another one. We're not going to do the sprint as a simulation. Um, I'm going to give you that information. The focus is on creating the goal, what happens in our sprint. So I'm going to give you a variety of things that have happened and how your team is going to respond to those. Then in the second retrospective, we're going to review the goal and look at what happened and what changed and then reflect on the experiment process itself. Okay, any questions? Okay, feel free to ask questions. So if you have a look, how many of you have had a chance to read through this already? Okay, oh, there'll be a moment. Let me tell you about your product. It's a web application. It's a B2C contract management site in the financial sector. And you've got some social media features with the idea that you're going to grow relationships. You're in a medium-sized company uh, who transitioned to Agile about a year ago. And you've got five dev teams at varying stages of Agile adoption. So you're one team within this. This is your organizational context, basically, I suppose. The context information here is made up in those blocks of product, technical, organization factors, and you've also got information about the last sprint. You've also got information about your retrospective goal. Don't worry about it for now. Um, so retrospective one, study the problem and create a testable hypothesis. So you've got five minutes now to talk amongst yourselves in your team, read through the, system, uh, the information, and um, just become familiar with the problem. The guys at the back, if you'd like to come and join one of the tables and participate, that would be fantastic. You just simply have to stop until something is resolved. There's a wait. So until that, you can't go forward and sort yourself out. So these are subtle distinctions. Try, don't worry about being particular about them. Just try to work out what you think is happening. Um, 
So in your teams now, uh, factors, I just want you to use the flip chart, find somebody who's willing to be a scribe at your table, and have factors that will accelerate the rate of change, and factors, the things that are happening in the organization that are making things go faster, and things that are making it go slower. Okay? It's just one way of analyzing your situation, and you've got another five minutes for that. Any questions? I'm going to be walking around. If you want me, just give me a buzz. Well, you know, wave. Is it one chart? No, just use one page. We're going to probably have to turn over later to use all the paper, but, yep. Those two factors, within those factors, what's making things harder, what's making things change faster, what's making things change more slowly? Yes. Okay, so you have a look. If you look at this, the backlog is clearly defined and stories are well groomed. So that means things will be quite predictable. So that's not, it will reduce the rate of change, but it enables you to work in a comfortable way. Um, Okay, uh, we just so, need to sit and identify the factors which will accelerate the rate of change and the factors which will reduce the cause impediments. Yes, right. yes. Or not, also that will, so, um, So you've all had a good time to think about what is happening in the system. What I want you to do now is pick one of the symptoms. There are many in that uh, example. Pick one that feels familiar to as many of you as possible. And identify this is a problem we have right now. And then define a target state. This is where we should be with this particular set of factors. So whether it's about your backlog or about team uh, relations or whatever it might be that seems right, that seems familiar, you have a little bit of experience with, describe the current state and define a target, uh, de yeah, a target state, like the long-term ideal. Um, and again, Two, three minutes, talk amongst yourselves, pick, the, pick one, and write down, this is what is now, this is what we would like it to be. The long-term ideal is, is a, an overarching thing. It's not what you're going to achieve in the next sprint. It's a big picture. Uh, so I would do it every six months or so, maybe every three months, not more, more often than that. Going to have something different. Current said the number of bugs is affecting our velocity, so we need to improve our quality across the board. And your target state, the more specific you can be, the better. Um, never have more than two open bugs is a possible. The chances of you having no bugs ever is zero. We work in software; they are a byproduct of software development. It's it's going to happen, but to be able to manage them, yeah. So that's an example possible one. The retrospective goal is part of the formulating idea section as well, but because of time constraints, I'm going to give this to you. So previously, you've spent some time and you know, you've decided as your team already, that pair programming on integration stories is the way you're going to, what is the route you're going to use for the next sprint. It's only the next sprint, remember? So the relationship between the target and the goal is this. Remember we had our current state, we had a whole lot of factors influencing it. 
Now we've set the target, yeah? and we've still got the same factors at play. The goal looks at one or maybe more than one of the factors and says we're going to pick this area and try to improve it. So, and this one is pair programming is uh, uh, mostly around team dynamics or it might be around your technical practices. The hypothesis is what we're going to do next. Hypothesis and do science is what my team members say every time we have a question. Do science on it. By doing something, we expect this result. And this is the test area that we're going to look at. So we've got a target condition. And now we need to have a theory about why, how, to, how the goal is going to help us reach that target condition. So by doing something, we expect this result. Past conditions are, we tried and we were right. So these are the symptoms we see if we were right. Fail conditions are, we tried and we were wrong. We didn't get the result. If you don't land up getting to do it, it's not a fail condition. The experiment hasn't worked, but you haven't actually tried the experiment. So then maybe you need to try a different experiment completely. But a fail condition says, we tried this thing and our expected result was different. All right? I'm uh, going to do that in teams, but just for the clarity. So hypothesis lies in the whole area. So you've got your factors that you're changing and the goal that you're implementing that will get you to the target area. But the hypothesis particularly ties your goal to your target state. It says, this is the action, our improvement goal that we're going to implement. And the reason we're going to do it is because it's going to get us somehow closer to our target state. Make sense? Okay? Yeah. So, another five minutes in your team, and then we're going to possibly have to run after this. technical skill like coding, which is the same thing as pair programming, right? We expect to improve our code quality and decrease the number of bugs. You might have something like that. You might have one sentence, but that sort of feel. A past condition. We note improvement in discoveries while we're pair programming and our bug count decreases. We bring attention to bugs. Our fail condition is we pair program, but there's still many new bugs being generated. So you'll be able to see, or your bug count hasn't changed, or so we're not seeing an effect yet. All right. Everybody got something along those lines? Thank you, people. So now we're going to do something like real life, um, but it's not because I'm telling you what happened. And it, all of these things have happened. They are real events. Um, and how your goal is affected. In a longer workshop, I would get you to do this yourselves. You've got three-week sprints. In week one, this is the implement in your experiment phase. The development manager expresses interest in your progress. So he finds out about your work, and he wants to know what's going to happen with this pair programming. He's excited. And as you go along, you discover a dependency on another team's architect. Happen to all of you? All right. So this is going to have an impact. Week two comes along, and you're busy grooming, and you discover a potentially large change that affects many stories on your backlog. Never happened to me. Um, so you're going to have to handle what, how that's going to impact your project. And then you hit an integration issue, and it takes you two days to resolve this between your social media and your uh, contract management section, and you put a lot of work into that. Third week comes along, and you make a breakthrough with an architecture change. So that's a good thing. But the dev manager is unhappy that you're interrupting the architect's team. Okay? So what happened? First off, the dev manager was all interested in your progress. This accelerates change in a good way. If you had a bad relationship with your dev manager, it might accelerate change in a bad way. But in this case, it's a good thing, right? 
And you hope that the dev manager will use your experiment to sell pairing across the team. This doesn't feel like it impacts your project, but it does change the way you do things, right? <laughs> then you discover an dependency on another team's architect. And this decelerates change because you slow down, but what you do is you invite her to pair with you and with your team members so that you can get that knowledge across. Your progress on your goal, you have at least started pairing, but it's not as you expected it would be. Second week comes around. While you're grooming, you discover a large change that affects many, large, many stories, potentially large. This accelerates change also in a negative way because you're going to have to replan your release and you need more time from the architect. Your integration issue hits you. Also decelerates change because your team slows down, but everybody starts pairing and swarming so they learn a lot about the integration changes. So, the pairing on the integration issue does improve your knowledge. You are still getting there with the pairing. And you are still doing the pairing, right? So what happened in the third week? You made a breakthrough with the architecture change that will come as a result of swarming. This accelerates change in a good way because you can get going again. And you can take it into your release planning because remember we've discovered that change, so the one thing impacts the other thing. And you thank the architect for all her help because at this point tensions are a bit tight but the dev manager is still unhappy that you're interacting with the architect's team, which increases pressure and it may or may not change, make change, but it's something that's going to change the way you deal with it. It might not make things go faster or slower, but ups the ante. But you discuss ways to work with her team in return because she's helped you, you can help her. Um, and so your, pairing, your progress is that pairing has helped you resolve a difficult problem and it has made an impact on the pro process. Um, and because that's hard to remember, I'm going to bring this around to all of you with all that information. In the second retrospective, study the results and review your hypothesis. So what happened in our check results? Um, let me ha uh, yeah, we can do this. You've missed your sprint. You have to replan your release, but the architectural breakthrough will help save time. You had to deal with some organization dynamics, and you did manage to pair quite a lot. Now you're going to come and review your experiment that you've just set up that was by doing something we expect this and our past condition and failed conditions. What you want to check is were our assumptions correct? And which of the pass or fail conditions do we see and what does that tell us? Okay, for example, in your hypothesis, by sharing domain knowledge and technical skill while coding, to improve our quality, uh, we, we expect to improve our quality decrease. This is probably not clear to us yet. Why? because our goal didn't focus on bug counts. So we didn't maybe measure our bug count. We did pair, but we might not have actually, we don't know if we've reduced our bugs yet because we were so worried about integration. Okay, so in your teams, another five minutes and I'm bringing you this so that you can look back at it if you need to. <coughs> you don't need to wait for the paper to start discussing though. No. Can I get one of those back? Did I give you three or two? Okay. Pardon? We need a print of that. Just one, uh, just to share amongst each other. You don't need one each. Okay. I seem to be a bit short. Pardon? Did I give you the same page? Yes. My apologies. Here are some more. Okay. 
Okay. Look at your uh, target state and where is your hypothesis? By doing something? Okay, by doing that. So in this, where is your pass and fail conditions? So we have got all the pass. We have to try to use it for the fail condition. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so what do you want to do? You need to go through all the pass and fail? Yes. And, and the expectation. Was your expectation met? And if not, why not? What happened instead? So what happened? You also want to think about how much closer are you to your target state and what might you need to adjust to get there. Two minutes, because we, we're really short on time. Had both, uh, both the outcome, because normally in a retrospective you say, we did, we sort of did, we didn't meet our goal. Okay, did we need to do it again, yes or no? Actually, why and what, what, what part of us failed? Or what part of the experiment, not the people? Okay? Can you see a way in which you can bring this into your retrospectives? Do you look at when you have or haven't met them? Do you look at, does that get us closer to where we want to be? Yes. Our yes. big picture. It's the next short term cycle, the next sprint. What is that block that 80% can resolve now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For a sprint, I'm looking at three to six months. Yeah, so when you have a target, state, yeah. we always try to get a right hour ideal states and then write actions towards them. And the right. actions are just steps, and every retro or within the team, we don't always do this, of course, things fly past, but you look at that ideal state and go, are we there yet? No. Did we get closer? Yes or no? Do we need another goal or action that takes us a step closer? Right. Yeah, so, you, know, you can tie that to organization as well. So what happens is after you've done your initial set of agile ramp ups, you start to tie to organizational goals. You start to tie to bigger goals that are going to take you beyond the level of we are just doing agile to we are getting somewhere amazing. And we can see if we're getting there or not. And if we're not, we can see where we want to change what little factor we can try to play with. It's an experiment. It's business, so it's not, it's, but it's fun. Checking what is happening and moving somewhere forward is fun. So that's it. That really is the end. <laughs> Thank you very much for your very, very active participation. I really appreciate that. And I hope you all have a really good rest of the conference. If you want to get in touch with me, that's how you can find me. That's my blog, my company, Suggs's, the user group, and I'm on Twitter. All right, if you want to have a question, it is just before quarter past. So, so we do retrospectives at the sprint level. Yes. Right? But if you want to have it uh, at, a, at a bigger, with yes. a bigger scope, like at the release level, then how is it different? Um, so your goal is probably a little bit less smart for a long-term goal. You want, to have a, you want to be able to know if you've achieved it, but it might not be quite as specific because if you have it too tight, it's important to have it tight for a sprint. You can or cannot see, you can see what's happened. But you might have something looser, and I'd do it three to six months, not less than three months. This is far too much overhead for sprint to sprint. Typically, you probably have a larger 
it was at a release level, at the sprint level, you try to keep it team size. So what you could do if you've got lots of teams, like they've got five teams, yeah. is at a release level, one team can take on, we'll look at this side, or you know, you can make it a, a bigger collaborative thing. Yeah, that's a big idea for us, because try and get people from, you know, whoever was sort of involved in the release, all together. At Sprint, we, we, we seem to do a good job, a better job. Right? Because it's, the team is there, and, you know, it's very easy to get them together. So and when you're trying to do something, and you aren't succeeding because of your organizational structure, yeah. being able to give evidence as to why this will help you and why you need the change is very important. Then sometimes you can make that change and sometimes you can't, but you might find something else that's a nice, a good way to cooperate. But the thing that the test gives you is something to say, this is what we're trying to achieve and we can't because of this. This is where we've hit a stumbling block. We've got clear, you've got the words for it. Yes. I also think that one of the Thank you.